Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks very much for joining us in one more webinar from the Global Changer webinar series. I'm Katja Valli, Schools and Exams Marketing Manager here at Cambridge, and I'm based in Sao Paulo. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. Today, we have the pleasure of having Viviane Kirmeliani with us, one of the authors of Global Changer, our new series for teenagers. Before we begin, I would like to have some housekeeping with you. But before I say the housekeeping stuff, uh, please use the chat box and tell us where you are joining from. I see here people from Morocco, from Caxias do Sul, from Ribeirão Preto, from Argentina, Uruguay. Wow. Wonderful. Keep writing where you are joining us from. Belém. So good to have you here with us this afternoon. All right, people are coming in. Moving on then to our housekeeping alerts. Uh, please use the Q&A tool here in Zoom to send your questions to Viviane. Viviane will answer them at the end of her presentation. By the end, I will also post a link for feedback. And from this link, you will get access to download your certificates. Moving on. We are in a series of webinars for Global Changers. We, we have had two already. Today is Viviane's time. And next month, we will have Denise with the topic of cross-curricular content. If you have missed past webinars, you have the chance of watching the recordings that are there in our YouTube channel, Cambridge Brazil YouTube channel. There you will find a list, a playlist for the Global Changer webinars very easy to find. You have a picture of it in the next slide. There you are. Just look for the Global Changer webinars playlist. We also have been posting articles about these uh, webinars in our blog, World of Better Learning. Moving on, I have the pleasure then to introduce Viviane Kirmeliani, who's a teacher, teacher trainer, ELT editor, and also a writer, one of the authors of Global Changer. Thanks very much, Viviane, for accepting our invite. And today, Viviane will be talking about ways and hows of creative thinking in the ELT classroom. Have a wonderful presentation, Viviane. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Katia. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Cambridge for having me. I'm very happy to be here again talking to teachers and it's interesting to see people from other countries as well not only from brazil uh well i i, feel, I always feel a little bit nervous when i have to to work with webinars because you know i cannot see people's faces so uh please be patient with me <laughs> so our topic today is creative thinking in the elt classroom some reasons to work with this, uh, with this skill in class and how to work with it. And um, this is our agenda for today. Yes, so first I'll tell you a little bit about me. Then uh, I'm going to ask you two questions. We're gonna use Menti to answer these questions. First, I'm going to ask if you believe we can learn to be creative. And then we're going to work with uh, some keywords that come to your mind to your minds when we think of when you think of creative thinking. Then we will discuss what people and institutions say about creativity. Next, we're gonna look at the Cambridge Life Competencies as a framework to work with creative thinking in our classes. Then we're gonna focus on the whys, the hows, and finally, we're gonna have the questions and answers, okay? So keep your questions to the end of our session. Well, first about me, Katja has introduced me. Um, I have been in ELT since 
1994, I started as a teacher. I was also a teacher trainer for some time. I worked for different publishers as an editor, academic consultant, and now I'm a freelance EOT editor and content writer. And I have participated in different projects, uh, both for publishers in Brazil and in other countries. Uh, Mexico is one of them. I see that we have people from Mexico here. I'm honored to be one of the authors of Global Changer. And my main interest is uh, in, in seeing how we can make ELT materials more diverse and how they can better reflect students' realities. Uh, this is my main concern, let's say, my main interest at the moment. So first, uh, I have this question for you um, about creativity. So I'd like you to go to Menti. If you have never used this uh, tool, it's quite simple. You just type, you can use your cell phone or the computer you were watching this presentation from and just type menti.com, www.menti.com. And then you're just going to insert this code, this code that we have here, it's 55866079. And then, yes, I'm going to type, someone is asking here about the link. I'm just going to type the address here on the chat box. And then you can go to Menti. You just type this and you're going to see this screen that we have here with a question. And you just have to answer. Can we learn to be creative? Yes, we can. No, we can't, or I'm not sure. Okay, so just go and answer and type in your question. You're going to start seeing some results in a, in a few moments. We have some questions here. Oh, just positive answers. People, people have a positive frame of mind here towards creativity. This is good. Yes, nobody's answering, no, we can't, or I'm not sure. Just going to reload it again to see if we have some more answers. Okay, so most people answer that we can be creative. This is good because we can learn to be creative. And we're going to dis also discuss different types of creativity. When we're talking about creativity here in the, in the language classroom, we're not talking about being Einstein or Mozart. It's a different type of creativity. We will discuss that too. And then I have another question for you. Let me just, oops, yes. Let me move on to the next slide. And now here, uh, we're going to use Menti again, but instead of having a question here, we're going to create together, we're gonna to build together a beautiful word cloud. So I'd like you to go to menti.com, type in the code, it's a different code now, okay? And just write the three words that come to your mind when you think of, when you see creative thinking. Okay, so go to Menti again, type in the new code, and then just write, you're going to have this three uh, fields, just write the three words that come to your mind when you think of creative thinking. Okay, let's check. Yes, did I think it's not working. Ah, okay, we have some, some words already coming up. Connection, freedom, inspiration. Let's see if we have more words. Hmm. Innovation, music, poem, interesting. What else? Games, 
positive minds. Mm -hmm. Reasoning, interesting to see reasoning here. New ideas, innovation. Okay, okay. Right, so let's get back. Oh, so some more words here. It's interesting because the, the word cloud keeps building up. It's difficult to get back to the presentation, yeah, because we are curious to see other people's answers, but let's get back to it. Um, so I see some interesting words. So what do people say about creativity? Because, you know, we can have, uh, I, I have read a lot to get ready for this webinar. Um, and everybody, you know, all the, the, the people who write about uh, creativity have said that it's difficult to, uh, to define this concept. So the first thing I did was say, okay, okay, so it's difficult to define it. Let's take a look at the dictionary. So then I went to the Cambridge Dictionary and I found this definition. According to it, it is creativity is the ability to produce or use original and unusual ideas. But let's see what else people say. Um, in this book, Creativity in the English Language Classroom, we have a more a broader definition. According to it, creativity is the ability to produce something new from imaginative skill, whether a new solution for to a problem, a new method or device, or a new artistic object or form. So it's a little bit broader here. But to, we have two things in common, you know, when we look at both definitions, the one from the dictionary and the one from the, the book, we have this idea of producing, creating something new in original. Moving on, another definition. Uh, for, uh, this one I got from the Cambridge Life Competencies, uh, Competencies Framework. We'll be looking into this document in a few moments in this session. So according to it, Creativity is the tendency or ability to generate multiple original and innovative ideas or possibilities rapidly or elaborate on them. So this definition goes even a little further because we can, it, it talks about um, elaborating on things that, have, that already exist. So not exactly creating something new, but making something better, you know, improving something, let's say, in a way. And finally, when we're talking about, I mentioned Einstein and Moser, this is not the type of, of creativity we were, we're discussing here. And I found this very interesting quote in creativity in the English language classroom in this book. You're gonna find it in my references at the end of this session. And I just loved it and I decided to bring it to this uh, session. While not everyone will have the big C, creative genius of an Einstein, a Picasso, a Moser, or a Dostoevsky, everyone can exercise what some have called little C creativity, which is inherent in language itself. And we'll also be discussing that, that using language, you know, a foreign language or your own language demands being creative. We'll be discussing that too. So Alan Malley said that that made this difference between the big C and the little c in creativity in the English language classroom. Okay, so moving on, well, we have discussed creativity, but what about creative thinking? Are they the same thing? In a way, they are, because creative thinking is simply creativity being put into practice. So when we put creativity into practice in, um, let's say in a formal or systematic way, when we use abilities and soft skills to come up with these new solutions to problems or new products or a new work of art, for example, we are being, we are uh, thinking creatively. So creative thinking is creativity into practice. Is the famous thinking outside the box. I love this image. <laughs> I think it has become very popular, you know, this expression uh, recently, you know, everybody talks about it, we need to think outside the box, we have to think about outside the box, so we have to think creatively. But how can we do that? I think this is a big and important question. But before I answer how we can do that in our classes, let's focus on why we should do that in our classes. 
So some whys. <laughs> I, I think there are uh, several reasons, maybe <laughs> over a dozen reasons to work to develop creative thinking in our classes. And I have brought some of them, some reasons for that. Uh, first of all, creativity is essential. It's an essential part of human nature and it's also essential to our survival. I brought this picture here. These are some cave paintings. So it's interesting to notice that we have the animals, right? I think you can identify them on the right and the left, but you also have this human figure, this human drawing here in the very center, but the head, I don't know, it looks like a, a solar, the solar system or something like that. The head is completely different. So it's a highly creative way of <laughs> depicting a human being, yeah, that we have here. So it's interesting to notice that, that even in cave paintings, we can identify creativity. And then we have Alan Malley again. He said, put in a maze, we will find our way, we human beings, okay? Put in a maze, we will find our way out. But unlike rats, we are also capable of forming the concept of a maze and of designing one. So creativity is one of the things that makes us different from other animals, right? Uh, so I, I love this passage, so I decided to brought it here. So it's, it's interesting to notice that, that if we weren't creative, we probably would be living, still be <laughs> in the caves, living with our, as our ancestors in caves. Another reason. Creative, creative thinking is the key to deal with this fast changing world that we are living in right now. And I'm a strong advocate for this. We need to prepare our students with skills and experience that go much beyond learning English, right? And then to do that, we need a consistent framework. When we work, when we want to work with other skills in our lessons, when we want to work with create, uh, creative thinking, critical thinking, develop collaboration skills, we must use a consistent framework. And the language research department at Cambridge has developed that, the Cambridge Life Competencies Framework. And there is a special booklet only about creative thinking. If you, I think I, oh, we're gonna see that in a few moments. We're gonna have a QR code for you to scan in and get access to the booklet. So I think this is another reason we have to go beyond language. We're not just language teachers anymore. Okay, we have to worry about the present perfect. We have to worry about the vocabulary, vocabulary our students uh, need to learn, but we should also focus on, as educators, we should also focus on all the, these other skills that students will need to thrive in this new world. Another reason, well, creative thinking is inherent to learning and to using language, right? Uh, I got here another passage, another interesting thing that I read and I wanted to share with you. Linguistic creativity is not simply a property of exceptional people, but an exceptional property of all people. So again, Creativity makes us different from, from animals, from other animals, right? So it's say, okay, so when you're talking about linguistic creativity, are we talking about uh, being uh, like the works of Shakespeare? Yes, we are, but we're also talking about toddlers using language. Shakespeare, as I mentioned, or even a stand-up comedian, right? If you have had the chance, if you have children, or if you have, or if you work with children, uh, I'm sure that you have a funny, interesting story about how children use language in different contexts. So we are creative with language. We have to make use of this creativity in our lessons, in our classes. Another reason, creative thinking can help teachers motivate and engage students. And then we have some sub reasons here. <laughs> Different reasons for that. Why? Because creative thinking allows students to express themselves. We give them room. We can give them room to express, express their ideas. And this increases students' motivation. 
We also uh, can improve students' self-esteem and self-awareness. Yeah. And why? Because learning English becomes more enjoyable and students have this sense of language ownership. I love this term, language ownership, because when I create and I produce with language, language becomes something that I own. It becomes my language, part of my universe. So we, when we stimulate creative, creative thinking in our lessons, and we're gonna see how in a few, in a few minutes, uh, students feel that the English language belong, uh, belongs to them. Creative, creative thinking also allows for divergent reasoning because there are no right or wrong answers. We can have a myriad of answers, several answers, several uh, solutions to the same problem in our classes. And we're going to see some examples of that, of the divergent reasoning. It helps a lot students who are not logical or analytical, uh, students who sometimes <laughs> feel quite confused, for example, in highly systematic grammar lessons, they feel much more comfortable in lessons in which we foster creative thinking because they think differently and they feel accepted. And then when we think of students, who are highly analytical and logical, creative thinking helps them think in a flexible way. They have to be open to uh, different perspectives. They have to be open to creativity. They have to accept that there are no right or wrong answers. So this is also very important, okay? So I'd like to finish my why session here, my why part of the session here. We have a short video. I love this video. I, actually, I love this TED Talk. I think everybody should watch it by Sir Ken Robinson. It's a TED Talk, Do, skills, cre uh, do School Skill Creativity. Uh, Sir Ken Robinson, who unfortunately died in 2020, uh, gave this presentation, this TED Talk in 2006. I think nowadays it has over 30 million views, but we're not going to watch the whole uh, session, of course, we're going to watch this uh, uh, a short extract, less than a minute, because he's telling an interesting story about children and creativity. So let me play it for you. Let me just check if the sound is shared. Yes. Okay. If you have any problems with the sound, just let me know in the chat box. My contention is all kids have tremendous talents and we squander them pretty ruthlessly. I had a great story recently, uh, I love telling it, of a little girl who was uh, in a drawing lesson. She was six and she was at the back drawing and the, the teacher said, this little girl hardly ever paid attention. And in this drawing lesson, she did. And uh, the teacher was fascinated. She went over to her and she said, what are you drawing? And the girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the girl said, they will in a minute. <laughs> Kids will take a chance. You know, if they don't know, they'll have a go. I'm all right. They're not frightened of being wrong. Okay, I'll pause it here. You can watch the whole uh, TED Talk online. So this thing about children being creative and not being afraid of failure, this is something that we, we kind of lose as we get older. As children get older, they kind of lose it. So when we work with creative thinking in our lessons, we stimulate that we have to, we must have this frame of mind of not being afraid of making mistakes. This frame of mind of accepting that there are no right or wrong answers. So let's get back to this child who said she was able to draw God, right? So I think this is so important nowadays. I mean, the whole TED Talk is marvelous. I think everyone should watch it but we won't have time for this today because I have other things to discuss. So let's move on with our session. Now, I don't mean to say that- okay, Let me change the slide. Yes. So when we are in class, we, are, we have so many uh, concerns, right? We have the present perfect. I always love to mention the present perfect because at least here in Brazil, <laughs> teachers usually freak out when they have to teach the present perfect and students freak out too when they have to learn it. But anyway, so we have creativity. It seems that we have this dichotomy, you know? We have creativity on one side of the board. 
right? And on the other side, we have analytical thinking, analytical uh, reasoning that we need to understand, for example, grammar uh, lessons. We have tests, we have assessment, we have all the requirements in our curriculum. Sometimes we have very tight schedules. We have, I don't know, uh, four or five pages to teach in five, in five in, sorry, in 50 minutes in a 50 minute class. We have very large classes depending on our, on our teaching context. We have to deal with parents' expectations. We have students' fear of failure and our fear of failure as well. We might have peer judgment in the classroom, lack of flexibility. And then it seems that all of these things, they are uh, kind of against creativity. And what I'm proposing here is that we move towards a different direction. We have all these constraints and creativity in our lessons, right? So this is my proposal uh, to you that we try to combine and make arrangements and make compromises to have all of these things in our lessons, okay? So we have discussed the whys, we have discussed definitions, we have discussed the whys of creative thinking in our lessons. Now let's move on to the hows. <laughs> So, okay, Viviani, I agree with you. Creative, creative thinking is important, but how am I going to work with that in my lessons? And then we, let's get back to the Cambridge Life Competencies uh, Framework. Here is the keyword code I had promised you. So if you scan this keyword code, you can go directly to Cambridge's website for the Life Competencies uh, Framework. So what are they? Okay, a brief introduction. The competencies are marvelous. They're not complex. Okay, so a quick introduction here. So they have been created as an answer to all the educators worldwide who have asked, how can we understand these life skills, 21st century skills, people give them different names. How can we understand them? How can we integrate these skills into our English language programs? So Cambridge has organized these competencies, the life competencies, into a framework. And it has organized you know, these ideas into six competencies that describe how these essential skills can be worked in different levels of education. So from, from pre-primary to adult education, we have the competencies there. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, Katja has uh, put the link here in the chat box to the life competency. So if you work with adults, you're going to find information for your students. If you work with pre-primary learners, you're gonna find a framework for them. So the six, uh, so the competencies here are creative thinking, critical thinking, learning to learn, communication, collaboration, social responsibilities, and emotional development. You can see that creative thinking is the first, right? The first here. And then, for creative thinking, we have this idea that learners, learners should actively participate in creative activities, generate new ideas, and use them to solve problems. So when we consider creative thinking in the framework, we have three core areas, which are preparing for creativity, generating ideas, and implementing ideas and solving problems. So in the, when you look at the document, you're going to, at the document, you're gonna find information. Okay, how can I prepare pre-primary learners for creativity? How can I generate ideas with secondary learners? How can I implement ideas and solving problems with, I don't know, adult learners? Okay, so you're going to find information for all the segments. So now let's take a look at each core area in secondary, okay? As I am an author of a, material, <laughs> a series for secondary students, I have selected secondary here to show you as an example. So for example, in preparing for creativity, for creativity, we have four components. Then we have example of what students should be able to do, the can-do statements, and also some example language. What kind of language will students produce in this kind of, in this context? So for example, 
uh, when they are preparing for creativity, they should participate in a range of creative activities. And they will, an example, they will be able to engage with and respond to creative works from art, music, and literature by simply saying, for example, I love. So I love this work of art. I love this song and so on and so forth. Another component is exploring issues and, cons and concepts. Then we have two other components, okay? You can analyze the document in detail once you download it. So this is the first core area. After that, for secondary, we have generating ideas. And then the same thing, we have the component, the example language and the can do statements. And the same for implementing and solving problems, okay? So this is the framework. Go to the Cambridge website to download the documents. You're going to find, let me just get back just to show you one thing, one important thing. You're going to find documents for each area here, creative thinking, critical thinking, learn to learn, communication. You're going to find booklets for each of these areas. And you'll also find an introduction, a separate booklet, just an introduction to the framework. I think uh, once we decide to work with new things in classes, in our classes, it's always a good idea to, um, to have a framework to support our work in the same way that we use books or we use a method or an approach when teaching languages. Well, let's get back to where I was. And now the hows. It's time to switch on the bulb. We discussed creativity and creative thinking. We talked about some reasons. And now it's time to share with you some ideas, some suggestions. But first, a disclaimer. In order to engage students, in order to promote creativity and creative thinking in our lessons, we should also allow ourselves to be creative. Yeah, I think uh, this is something we hardly ever think of. But we teachers need to act as role models. We need to be creative as well. So we cannot preach creativity to our students if we're not creative, if we're not, if we don't practice that ourselves. So for example, if we want our students to sing a song, we have to sing along. If we want them to act, mime, uh, run around the classroom, we have to do the same. If we want our students to write a poem, poem or a story, we have to write poems and stories too. We want them to draw and paint, we have to engage in these activities. So uh, we need to kind of relinquish our teacher control in a way, the, the teacher control persona. You know, we have to kind of hide it in a, in a drawer or under our teaching table in the classroom. And we have to become part of the group. We have to participate and not behave as someone who's above or outside the group. In this case, the group of students. Okay, so this is my disclaimer. Once, once we decide to work with creative thinking and creativity in our classes, we have to allow ourselves to be creative and to think creatively as well. Okay, so after the disclaimer, let's go to the tips. Okay, I have brought six different tips six different things we can do to work with creative thinking in our lessons. And I have um, used some examples. You're gonna see some examples from Global Changer here, but if you don't use Global Changer, I'm sure that you can uh, adapt these ideas to any series you're using right now or any materials you're working with right now. So I think uh, we have to start by taking it easy. Oops, yes. We have to start by taking it easy. We can start by tweaking, by changing some familiar tests. So, you know, things that we always do in class, we can start with that. So I brought here a very common task that we have, a very common type of activity that we have in any course book. We have to fill in the blanks. We have this profile, the student's profile. This student here, her name is jo Joana Silva. Uh, she's from Brazil, but she lives in Australia. Students have to complete that, to complete this text, this short introduction with forms of the verb to be, right? So how can we stimulate students here to think creatively 
with this activity. So first, after doing the task, they can do different things here. They can, they can change the text to their context. So, hi, I'm Viviane Kimeliani, I'm Tarada years old, I'm in grade six, etc. So they can adapt that. And they can think of how this text would change if Joana Silva were a student from another planet, for example. Or if she were, for example, a student from a country that is very far away from their country or from a cultural context that is there very different from their context. So they can change this text. How would this change, uh, how would this um, uh, text change? If we have, for example, if Joana Silva were a student from, um, for example, let's say from Germany, or if she were a student from a country where girls don't have access to education, right? So uh, we're talking about a very traditional type of activity. We can find this activity in any kind of course book. Students work with that in the same way they would, you know, traditional work as we have in the rubric here, in the rubrics here, but then we change a little thing about it and then we can simulate creative thinking by making a small change in the, the activity. Let me show you another example. Here we have an activity in which students have to complete the sentences in a way that the sentences are true for them. And here they could add different things to the second part of the sentence. So, okay, they have completed, they have said, I like pizza or I don't like pizza, but then they can talk about other things they like. or uh, other members of their family or other pieces of clothing that they are wearing or other times they do homework. So instead of simply completing the sentences with the verbs, they can change these sentences in different ways. Or they can even imagine, you know, work with a classmate and say, okay, my classmate, I'm working with Julia here. Mm, does she like pizza? I think she does. So she likes pizza. Mm, she's not looking at her cell phone right now. Uh, she, I think she doesn't have a lot of cousins. Uh, she's not wearing jeans right now. And I think she doesn't do her homework on Saturday evenings, for example. So they can put themselves in their classmates' shoes, for example, right? And come up with other ideas. Another suggestion on how we could change a very typical task that we find in course books. Here we have a practice, uh, this is oral practice on the past progressive. Students have to complete the sentences in a way that, uh, that is true for them. Uh, and here again, they can change that, imagining that they are different people. Okay, so if I were a student in, a, in another country, would I be, you know, what, what, what would I be doing at 6 a.m. yesterday or at this time a week ago so they can put themselves in other students' uh, shoes? So again, I brought here three examples of tests that are very common in any course book and suggestions on how we can change them to uh, stimulate, to foster creative thinking. Now, let's take a look at some other examples. Uh, this is a page from uh, Global Changer. We have here this question, what makes us happy? This is an, op uh, uh, an opener, uh, a unit opener, right? So we have these different teenagers and we already have this task here, the, the think task. In, in Global Changer, the think tasks, uh, they either promote creative thinking or critical thinking. So here we have students kind of have to imagine why the teenagers are happy. They have to think of things that make them happy, right? So we could also propose something a little bit different here. We could ask students, okay, so imagine you are one of the students here, one of the people here in this photo. Uh, how are you feeling right now, for example, right? This is a way to stimulate creative thinking. I also have some other examples here from uh, Global Changer. Uh, this is from a lesson. This is one of my favorite units in one of my favorite lessons. It's a lesson, a reading lesson about a woman called Nellie Bly. 
uh, in the turn of the 19th to the 20th century, in the turn of the 20th century, she traveled around the world in less than 80 days. She was inspired by uh, Julius Verne's uh, book, Around the World in 80 Days. And she convinced her boss, she was a journalist, Nellie was a journalist, and she convinced her boss that she could make the trip in fewer days. And she, she made it. Yeah, she, 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 she was able to do it. And she traveled with only one small suitcase. So here the proposal, the thing that I'm proposing students to do is to imagine they are Nellie Bly and they can only take this small suitcase for this around the world journey. What would they pack, you know, in a small suitcase? So it's a great way here to stimulate students' uh, creative thinking and imagination. And they could, in, in, after making their list of things they would carry in this small suitcase, they could sit together and compare and then we're working with critical thinking, <laughs> not creative thinking anymore, but they could work together in pairs and compare their lists and see if they would change anything, right? So this is an example of creative thinking in Global Changer. Another example, uh, this is from another lesson that I love too. It's about a, a family trip around uh, friends in a camper, right? And then students have to, once again, imagine that they are in this situation. You know, you are in this road trip with your family. What do you like? What, what don't you like? So students have to put themselves in this situation and uh, imagine what it would be like. So here I've just brought some examples of creative thinking in Global Changer. Another tip. Uh, we kind of did that in the previous one, yeah. Uh, in the previous tip, we kind of we kind of explore the images. So I'm just reinforcing this tip here. Explore all of these beautiful images you have in your course book. So here we already have think questions. For example, where they are, where the the teenagers are in the photos, the importance of having places for uh, leisure in our cities. But then we can go beyond and propose something like this, you know? Imagine you are one of the people here in this a photo, right, in the photos, in one of the photos, sorry. And then think about them for a few minutes. So you have to create a new name. You have to imagine where you are. You have to talk about what is happening, uh, how you are feeling. And then, you know, the questions here that you can propose are endless. It will depend on your student's uh, language level, of course. But these three questions here, a student who is in Global Changer 1, for example, or a student who is in the beginning of uh, secondary school in any country would be able to answer, right? Maybe not the present perfect, but <laughs> with the present continuous, okay? So explore these images. We have beautiful images there. We always have some proposals. You know, when we write materials, uh, authors, we always imagine ways uh, teachers can explore the, these images, but I'm pretty sure that you teacher, you know, with your creativity, you can go much beyond. Tip number three, encourage students to create stories. And, you know, uh, the springboard for the story, you know, this, 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 this spark for the story can come from different places. Here I got another example from uh, global changer. This is also unit five. And students have this very interesting infographic about transportation in Hong Kong. If you have seen my presentation about the sustainable development goals in July, you have seen this spread before. It's just that I love this lesson. So we have this person in Hong Kong, this tourist in Hong Kong uh, called Tom, and he gives this uh, tips about transportation. So what story could we generate here? One suggestion is students can imagine themselves as tourists in Hong Kong and they can write this travel journey. No, this travel, sorry, this travel diary. They can write a travel diary about their journey about, around the city. What did they see? What were the smells of the city? What were the sights? Which places did they visit? So they could write this travel diary, for example, you know, this entry on a travel diary about a day in Hong Kong. So here we have uh, an unusual, let's say, lesson as a starting point for a story. 
Another tip, this is number four, don't be afraid of art. We are, I, I, I confess that I am kind of afraid because I think I'm not artistic at all, but as teachers, we should not be afraid of art. And art can come in different ways. This is another lesson. It's about rethinking waste. Uh, some lessons from Japan. There's this city in Japan that is a zero waste city. This is a real story. And then we have this think moment that says, think about something you bought recently. Did it have a lot of packaging? Did it create a lot of waste? Next time you buy something similar, what can you do to avoid unnecessary waste? Here, from this idea of packaging as being waste, we can ask students to create a work of art from packaging, for example. They can bring this packaging from home. You know, think of the last things that your parents bought at the supermarket, you know, bring the package. What works of art can we create? Is it possible to create works of art? What can we do with that? Students can work together, for example, in small groups and come up with these works of art in our classes. So it's a very, again, this is an unusual starting point <laughs> for working with creative thinking in our classes. And this has to do with my disclaimer, remember? We have to be creative. So we have to try to be creative in our proposals when working with, uh, when we want to foster creative thinking in our classes. Yeah, this is part of the creativity practice that I mentioned, right? Another example here, it's another lesson from Global Changer. We have the, the haikus, the, the Japanese uh, poems. And why not? We can have a haiku competition in class. We can engage our students. We can write our own haikus at home. We teachers, right? We write the poems at home and we bring them. Okay, so this is what I did. Now it's your turn without, you know, uh, this fear of failure or fear of peer, uh, of peer judgment. We'll be talking about that in a few moments too. Another tip, encourage divergent thinking. Divergent thinking has to do with thinking of all the possible answers to a question. So we, here we have a lesson about taking a break from social media, all right? And then we have this story of a boy who did it. He took a break. He was away from social media, media for five days. And then he, we have his account. He said that they won what he did. Day two and then day five, he decided to close some social media accounts and keep just two. So this was his decision. So here, as a way of promoting divergent thinking, you could ask students to come up with all the possible ways, all the things that Fernando, the boy in the story, all the things that Fernando could do to avoid social media, all the other activities he could do during his day while he was not using social media. So he could go to the park, he could talk with his friends, he could play a board game with his, I don't know, with his younger sister, he could take up a hobby. So there are no right or wrong answers here. And we stimulate students to think of possibilities quite fast. You know, if you keep a fast pace in class, this can be a very interesting, very dynamic activity, right? So one suggestion here. And finally, tip six has to do with helping students make their learning visible. You know, visible learning is something that we have been talking a lot lately. Uh, it has to do with organizing information in a way that shows uh, uh, what we have learned, all right? And in Global Changer, for example, we have different ways of doing that. This is an example from unit two in level one. We have this tray, let's say this food tray as a way of organizing different vocabulary that students are learning. Okay, so here we have this graphic organizer, let's say, it, that, let's say it was given to students already, it was in the book, but we can uh, help students find their way around that, right? For example, here we have a lesson on transport, transportation. They had to fill in the blanks here with different means of transportation. And we have this list of means of transportation. How can we help students organize this uh, content, you know, these words, these lexical items 
in a visible and um, interesting and creative way, right? Graphic organizers are great uh, resources for that. I'm a big fan of <laughs> graphic organizers. And if you go to a site as Canva, for example, as Canva, you can find loads and loads of graphic organizers that students can download. Okay, you're gonna have this, uh, gosh, how do you say that in English? You're gonna have this print, in Portuguese, you say marca d'água. <laughs> You're going to have this Canva thing there, the information, but it's okay. It's going to work well. Or you can simply share this, you know, with your students as models. So different concept maps, mind maps. We can work with Venn diagrams. You know, if you go online and search graphic organizers, you're going to find loads and loads of resources. So this is a way students can... Uh, can this is a way we can help students make their learning visible and each person will find a way for example my oldest daughter she loves to make what they call this uh schemas you know so she creates different things and she uses different colors on the other hand she has a friend you know her best friend prefers to write everything that the teacher says down for example so this is her way of dealing with content and my daughter has a different way and each student will have to find his or her own way of making this learning visible. And this is a way of fostering creativity as well. A ah, watermark, thank you, Katja, it's the watermark. <laughs> thank you. You know, instead of marca d'água, it's the watermark. Okay. So finally, we're getting to the end of our session. Finally, what does a creative lesson involve? So we had, your beautiful word cloud at the beginning of this session, you know, with all the words that came to your mind uh, when we, we when we, you saw creative thinking. And this is an interesting list that I came up with. So we have these elements in a creative lesson. I love working with music. <laughs> I think it's important to have fun and it's important to have this element of unpredictability, you know, to surprise our students' personal meaning this balance between like relaxation and tension, you know, tension in a way that students don't know what's coming next. They say, oh gosh, what the teacher has for us today? What kind of surprise does she have for us? So this is the tension, but also relax knowing that they are in a safe environment. A lot of colors, I love working with colors. I think you have noticed that from my <laughs> presentation and humor, you know, you must have fun and you must have humor. This is my lesson, you know, what I believe in. And some general suggestions, you know, I'll go through this list quite quickly so that we have time for questions and answers. First, we must have a relaxed atmosphere in class. No judgment, no wrong answers. Everybody has a right to express themselves. When in your planning, we start with tweaking the familiar tasks, changing the activities that you do every day in your classes. This is the best way to start working with creative thinking in class. You know, start small. Don't be too ambitious at the beginning. Offer students choice, you know, in tasks. Also put your creativity to work. Sorry, there's a typo here. Uh, put your creativity to work, be the role model. So, okay, you want students to write their story write a story yourself at home before class celebrate students originality you know forget accuracy <laughs> for some minutes and celebrate their originality originality when they come up with a funny uh, sentence in class even if, if it's not correct when you're correcting their homework if they come up came up with an original idea celebrate that and then correct the mistakes Encourage students to ask questions. This is fantastic, a fantastic way of promoting uh, creative thinking. Allow learners to be playful, to have fun, to use humor, even adult students. You know, I remember that I used to play dancing chairs, musical chairs <laughs> with adult learners, and they loved it because I was running around the chairs with them. No answers are wrong answers. I have said that sometimes already in this session. And make sure the classroom is a safe space for creative thinking. So once you have a relaxed at atmosphere, students have choice. They have seen that you are trying to be creative as well. Their originality is celebrated, celebrated. They can be playful. They can ask questions. 
the classroom will be a safe space for creative thinking. And finally, last but not least, I love this quote. I usually end all my sessions with this quote because I think it's so true. And these are my references, the bibliography. Um, you can take a picture. I, I recommend <laughs> you take a picture of this page. You're gonna find some interesting resources here. And now it's time for questions and answers. Great, Vivi. Thanks so much for your presentation with so many useful, interesting tips you shared with teachers. Uh, I have a question here. Problem solving can be a great way of promoting creative thinking. Do you have a good example for that? I, oh my God, there are so many examples. Let me think of one. Uh, I think that actually, well, what I would say is that uh, creativity is essential to problem solving. If we don't stimulate creativity first, students won't be able to solve the problem because many times you have to think outside the box. So although not all the time that we are creative, we are problem solvers, I believe that all the time we're problem, solver, problem solvers, we have to be creative. Totally agree with you. And creativity is something that the more you practice and exercise, right, the more creative you get, right? Yeah, in one, in one of the books I read, there was this interesting comparison about like, uh, like practicing for a marathon. You know, we have to run little by little, we have to run at least, I don't know, three times a week. If you want to run a marathon in, like, say, let's say, in two years' time, you have to start today and you need consistent practice, you know, and you're going to improve little by little. It's the same thing about creativity. Totally agree. All right. Any more questions, dear participants? Please don't be shy. Yes. I believe participants are still digesting all the content, Vivi, and I'm sure they will take some suggestion, some suggestions to their class next week or even tomorrow. <laughs> yes, lots of us teach on Saturdays. On Saturdays. In the Saturday yeah. morning lessons. <laughs> right. So I think we, we can move on, uh, Vivi. So if you want more information on our series, Global Changer, you can go to our website in the Branded Hub, the special page for Global Changer with lots of information. And if you feel like talking to us, please send us an email at attendimento.br at cambridge.org. I have posted the link for the feedback and the certificate already there. Please take a look. And we would like very much to thank you for the participation and hope to see you in our next webinar with Denise next month. Thank you so much, Vivian. It was really enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you, Katia. Thank you for having me. And thank you uh, for, you know, thank you to you all for being here this afternoon. Great. Enjoy the weekend, everyone. See you bye next bye. time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye.